Hello and welcome back. This is Sherry with Full Armor of God. And today I have a message for you from the Lord that has four scriptures to accompany it from the New Living Translation Bible and one from the English Standard Version Bible that's shown here on the screen. The first scripture is the book of Isaiah chapter 10 verses 20 through 23 and it's entitled Hope for the Lord's People. In that day, the remnant left in Israel, the survivors in the house of Jacob, will no longer depend on allies who seek to destroy them, but they will faithfully trust the Lord, the Holy One of Israel. A remnant will return. Yes, the remnant of Jacob will return to the mighty God. But though the people of Israel are numerous as the sand of the seashore, only a remnant of them will return. The Lord has rightly decided to destroy his people. Yes, the Lord, the Lord of heaven's armies, has already decided to destroy the entire land. The second scripture is the book of Isaiah, chapter 29, verse 13, and it reads, and so the Lord says, these people say they are mine. They honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. And their worship of me is nothing but man-made rules learned by rote. The third scripture is the book of Matthew, chapter 7, verses 21 through 23. And it reads, Not everyone who calls out to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Only those who actually do the will of my Father in heaven will enter. On judgment day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, we prophesied in your name and cast out demons in your name and performed many miracles in your name. But I will reply, I never knew you. Get away from me, you who break God's laws. The fourth scripture is the book of Revelation, chapter 16, verses 18 through 19. And it reads, Then the thunder crashed and rolled and lightning flashed, and a great earthquake struck, the worst since people were placed on the earth. The great city of Babylon split into three sections, and the cities of many nations fell into heaps of rubble. So God remembered all of Babylon's sins, and he made her drink the cup that was filled with the wine of his fierce wrath. And the last scripture is the book of Romans, chapter 6, verse 23. And it's from the English Standard Version of the Bible. And it reads, For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now for the message received from the Lord God. I actually began receiving it around 1130 approximately on September 21st. And it ended at 12.04 a.m. on September the 22nd. And it reads... Contrary to popular belief, you reap what you've sown. Atone for your sins. No one wins salvation unless and until he or she repents and accepts me, your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, into their hearts. My blood sacrifice is sufficient to cover your transgressions. However, you must turn away from them. Don't make excuses about why you do them. 
The kingdom of heaven is without sin. I hold the key to your salvation. You will stand before me in judgment on that last day. Will I say, welcome into the kingdom of God? Or will I say, depart from me, for I never knew thee? This is a reality on your dying day. So pray to be deemed worthy to enter into the kingdom of heaven on New Jerusalem. This reality is sooner than you think for many of you who are living worldly, unrepentant lifestyles. Judgments are beginning. Many judgments will fall upon your land, America. Mystery Babylon. Some people will be called home to me, and yet others will not be so lucky. They are not ready. Their garments have not been washed clean in the blood of the Lamb. You do understand what that means. They will not enter in through the pearly gates. Hell awaits them. Their transgressions sealed their fate. They would not listen to my servants, pleas to fall on their knees and ask me to forgive them. They did not know me and never prayed, praised, or worshipped me. Many days, some may even have gone to their churches, but they were not obeying me. No, they really were not praying to me at all. They uttered words that were mere verbalizations of rote speeches from memory. Their hearts showed me their true thoughts towards me, your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. They were either indifferent to me or they were thinking of their own selfish ambition. They would not let me into their hearts. I never knew them. So now we must be apart for eternity. The enemy kept distracting them away from me. He used what he had available to him from any of the open doors left ajar for him to creep in and lure them into sin. Reading the Bible was a nuisance to them, an annoyance that took them away from enjoying the sin. This supposed enjoyment only hardened their hearts towards me, your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. After sinning, they always felt empty and unfulfilled, always searching, and yet still they would not answer my calls to them. I would speak to them, but they could not hear my still, small voice. It was crowded out by their loud music or sporting events on TV. They believed they didn't need me in their lives. Now they will see how wrong they were. Please, please, please listen to these words my daughter is telling thee. She is speaking my words, urging you to wake up to the times you are living in. Your salvation hangs in the balance your nation, America, is surrounded by enemies in the seas off of your coastlines. After the calamity at sea, they will encroach upon thee up onto the shoreline. Then you will be defenseless and vulnerable to these foreign invaders. My chosen few, my remnant bride, will then become crusaders. They will find my children who are still alive and struggling to survive. They will bring them aid and show them the way back to me. You don't have to be here to see this play out. Pray out loud now and sway my opinion for mercy upon your souls. You are in the final countdown. I am God, the only one who is truly in control. Don't be left behind to be tempted by the enemy. Instead, 
know for sure you are mine by accepting my outstretched hand now. Ask for forgiveness now, and I will forgive a contrite heart and a humbled spirit. Hear it now, for very, very soon, I am taking my bride home. Will you be coming too, or will you be left alone, or worse, hearing me say, I never knew you. I love you all, 100 of my sheep. Jesus, the Good Shepherd.